All right. Welcome, everyone. Thank you all for being here on the Zoom call. And thank you all for being here if you're practicing with us um, in some other space-time dimension via YouTube. And uh, we appreciate sharing practice with you. Uh, so a couple of threads that um, seem, I, I, I always have that feeling with these Wednesday night drop-ins of just pulling, there's different threads that show up that kind of have a theme or somehow they end up being woven together, I hope. And uh, so that's what's happening tonight. And uh, one of the inspirations of of wisdom, of teaching, of um, heart inspiration. Sorry, I'm just gonna let folks in. Okay, come in. <clears throat> it's the building I'm staying in, which is um, um, for these last few weeks is a high rise in downtown apartment building in downtown um, or co-op downtown Toronto. And um, this is February, which has been designated as Black History Month. And in the lobby of this building, some of the members, I don't actually know who put them, maybe staff or members, um, have been putting up various posters and pieces of art and, um, yeah, mostly posters and art. Um, regarding teachings and history of Black peoples. And there's one big poster down there of um, Nelson Mandela, who you may know, <laughs> uh, I hope you know, um, who's a South, was a South African um, activist and politician, the first, what's the word, president or prime minister, president of South Africa? Is it president? I don't think they use prime minister. Um, and an amazing wise elder. And uh, on this poster is his face and this quote where Nelson Mandela has said, no one is born hating another person because of the color of in this, he says his skin, but so I'll just read his words. No one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin or his background or his religion. People must learn to hate. And if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. For love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. So we've been taught hatred. And if we can be taught hatred, we can also be, we can learn to love. Um, and especially this, that love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. So th this, uh, this, I, this reminds me when he says the opposite of hatred being love, he's saying, and another great and wise teacher and elder, um, Eli Weissel, who is a survivor of the Nazi concentration camps and a writer, I think a psychiatrist or psychologist as well. Gosh, I didn't do much. <laughs> I didn't get my research down very clearly, but there's so much to like a person's life that you can't sum up in these little pithy titles. Um, and he quite famously said that the opposite of love is not hate, rather it's indifference. And, that, and that's, that's, that's really wakes me up and is I think a powerful, and you'd have to check it out for yourself, but it rings true to me. So that the opposite of love is indifference. 
that's um, so what does indifference mean? Indifference is um, having no particular interest, is um, being unconcerned or detached from others or from parts of ourselves, um, not showing or feeling interest to be indifferent. Not it's, So it's not just a feeling, but it's an action. We're not showing any interest in others, we'll just say for now. And, um, and the opposite of that, so we can see this relationship to what is being called love, that the opposite of indifference is care, is heed, taking heed, listening, is concern, regard, um, awareness, curiosity. That sounds, those sounds like qualities of love to me. So um, you can see the relationship between these. Um, there's a, a show on um, Netflix that I haven't watched yet, but mm, hearing more about it, I, I might. Uh, it's called From Scratch, and it's based on... It's adapted from a book that's a true story. So I like true stories. Um, and so the American, um, she's an actress and she wrote this book. It was her experience um, um, that has become adapted into this story. And her name is Tembi Locke, T-E-M-B-I Locke, L-O-C-K-E. Uh, and she said that because she gets a lot of people writing to her asking, um, how do I find that kind of love? Because it's a love, it's about her experience of um, a great love. And um, so she was responding to these inquiries that people get, you know, how did how do you get that great, beautiful love? And uh, she responded that love is a verb uh, and and a practice. I I appreciate that so much. It's actions, it's practice. It's not like some ethereal hallmark thing. Um, and she goes on to say, I hope we all can know and experience many forms of love in our lives, beginning with the love we give. Yeah, we often we're often like I want love I need love <laughs> I want to be seen I want attention uh I want um to be regarded and cared for and and uh so she's pointing out uh it begins with what what we cultivate and uh um I don't usually live here in Toronto, um, especially not downtown, I have lived in Toronto for many years previously, but I, I really have been practicing with this and noticing that when I move through the streets with this quality of um, the opposite of indifference, with, with care, with love, with concern with uh, paying attention um regarding people that i'm re i receive that back very often and i come home feeling like when i've been out for a walk and i come back feeling like wow people are good <laughs> there's a lot of good folk out there they're just looking to they say hi like and how are you and it's uh, you can have some amazing conversations with people when you stop and see them and, and ask, how are you? And say, I see you. Like literally those words I've said to people lately, I see you. Yeah. And uh, so... So this love that we give, 
which is the opposite of indifference. It begins with attention, with mm, heed, with, uh, yeah. There was another study, uh, you may have heard of this, <laughs> called the 36 questions that lead to love or variations on this. And this was a study done by some psychologists or a couple, uh, Elaine and Arthur Aaron. And, and, and they were spouses and psychologists working together on this study, this project, and uh, around how to um, how to create and cultivate this experience of what we're um, exploring as love tonight, this experience of care and connection and compassion, uh, awareness. And uh, so they designed these um, 36 questions. And in, in their, so what they do is they just bring two random people together that have agreed to do this study and they sit together in a, in a room and take turns asking each other these questions. Uh, and then after, after these questions, um, they th then they're asked to just sit and make eye contact for four minutes uninterrupted. And they, they fall in love. <laughs> It's, you know, you, they, it's a type of love of like really caring about somebody's responses, really just, you know, and I'm, maybe you've had these type of experiences, you know, kind of experiential retreats or workshops or something where um, you just hold eye contact with somebody for a period of time. And it's like, you can't help but fall in love with them on some level, uh, as well as other experiences that happen in that. And just want to name, like, you know, part of this experiment was around eye contact, but it could also be just sitting, if you don't have sight, just sitting across from someone, having these uh, dialogue, this type of questions, this type of, um, hmm concern and care and um it could be some other form of contact just listening or or touch or something like that um i was also inspired this week by <laughs> leonard cohen and um because at the art gallery of ontario here there's a, a, a an exhibit um honoring his life and his work, his art. And um, yeah, one of the symbols that he created that's on one of, kind of became like his signature, you know, how Prince for a while there just had a, like a symbol. <laughs> so Leonard Cohen had this symbol that was like part of his uh, um, being known by that. And I think it's on one of the covers of an album as well. And it's two, heart so the you know the standard heart and then another one upside down so they're interwoven it kind of looks like a star of david except for the corners are softened into the heart and um these two interwoven hearts he said you symbolize for him love harmony interconnectedness I would add there, and um, abiding faith in humanity. Wow. Uh, abiding faith in humanity. That's so helpful to hear at times when it feels very difficult to have faith in humanity when we're seeing so much uh, suffering and hatred and cruelty and oppression, and violence. <sighs> and um, you know, that really circles back to Nelson Mandela's quotes there uh, regarding 
faith and and certainly what the Buddha taught as well, that love comes more naturally to the human heart and that we've been taught hatred and that we can be we can learn how to love and how to care and how to see. This re relates, I'm gonna wrap it up now, and it relates um, in brief to something we were talking about last week, which was, is um, called Vedana. And um, I can't go into that, but there's previous recordings on that, but it, it refers to things, all the ways we experience our world as uh, in that first moment of contact is pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral. And in particular, neutral is indifference. So as Eli Weissel said, the opposite of love is indifference. And so the neutral beings, the neutral parts of ourselves in this world, we're, we tend to be indifferent to. We don't really see some people. We don't really see a lot of people. Most people are neutral in in our in our world and worlds. Um, and so when we actually begin to pay attention and see and talk to and let our heart threads. <laughs> connect with, um, then the neutral um, begin to become dear. So, yeah. And when we practice with the heart practices that are called the Brahma Viharas or the, the divine abodes of the heart, it's often done with these kind of categories of beings. It doesn't have to be done that way, but it's often done that way. And it begins with ourselves often. And then moves to friendly people, the, the people that it's easy for the heart to feel connected to with good wishes, those we would say are you know, dear to us. And then we cultivate these heart qualities in relationship to what's called the neutral people, neutral beings. Again, this is like most people that we don't have a strong like or dislike for, and that we mostly are not seeing, not really knowing, not really caring about. Um, and as I was just saying, when you practice in this way, even if you never speak to that person, if you practice loving kindness in relation to neutral, a neutral person, you start to feel a great deal of care and concern and I would say love for them, with them. Um, there's lots of, lots of stories regarding this as well experiences retelling of experiences is a better way to say it the other category then so self beloved or friendly beings neutral and then unfriendly or difficult relationships difficult people and eventually to all beings everywhere so tonight for our practice, we're going to focus on uh, cultivating heart wishes, heart relationship with, particularly with the neutral and a little bit into the difficult. And we're going to begin mostly by focusing on our, ourselves, the aspects of ourselves that are unseen, the aspects of ourselves that are that we're indifferent to. Um, and then they will move, move on from there to the parts that have been abandoned even, or uh, neglected, unseen. Yeah. So what else about that? Um, that's it.
yeah that's all so we're going to practice now and the this practice is considered a companion it's like two hands supporting awareness of um awakening of insight calming uplifting uh, so these are brahma vihar practices of kindness of compassion and um, they support they support awakening they're part of awakening it's actually part of the eightfold path all right so that's the intro to the practice so now um to practice with these heart practices it's helpful that you begin by taking care of your your body if you want to dim your lights if you would like to lay down do you need any cushions or shawl or anything to be more comfortable um you could adjust those things you might like to turn away from the computer And so we want um, a posture that will cultivate energy and awakening uh, without tension or stress. So getting what you need for that. And as you're beginning to settle, you might see if you need any movements, perhaps any neck rolls or touch, looking around your space. So that eventually when you come to stillness, you, you feel ready and supported to come into stillness rather than just forcing or trying to get yourself somewhere. Let's see if your system would feel supported by any sighing breaths. Then uh, with the uprightness of spine, if you're sitting head upright, letting the bones supporting our posture so that the muscles can relax around that form. And we'll just begin by orienting to the space that you're in. It could be with eyes closed or open. And noticing is there a sense of any indifference in this space? You may be kind of used to the place you are in. See if you can just open to curiosity care what sounds are here what sense of light or space is here perhaps you have objects of comfort or beauty around you that you haven't been paying attention to Noticing what temperature is here. And 
One of the questions on the 36 questions that lead to love. For what in your life do you feel most grateful? You don't have to come up with an answer, but just let that question float in your heart awareness. For what in your life do you feel most grateful? What do you value most in a friendship? And so we're cultivating this curiosity and attention with ourselves. If you knew that in one year you would die suddenly, would you change anything about the way you are now living? And so we'll let go of the questions and just turn this kind curiosity, this heedful, mindful listening to ourselves. Softening any tension that isn't needed right now. And then seeing if there's any parts of ourselves that feel like a stranger. Parts that we haven't been paying attention to. And if something, some aspect, thought, awareness, sensation, place in the body floats into awareness, you might just say to that part of ourselves, I see you.
What do you need? And then in your own words, or just with a felt experience, offering that to yourself. May you be seen. May you be safe. We learn to love, we practice love. In these next few minutes of silence, you might like to just rest in any degree of felt experience of care you can give to yourself, in particular, the unseen parts of yourself. Or for some people, it may be words that resonate, wishes. May I be happy. May I be well. May I be safe. And as we open to these aspects of ourself that are that we may be indifferent to or neutral with, we may start to come into the territory of what's called the unfriendly or difficult parts of ourselves. Parts that maybe we've abandoned, parts that feel unpleasant or neglected. You don't have to create anything or really search for anything, but just just opening to as if you were meeting someone on the street and you're meeting this part of yourself. I see you. What do you need?
And in the same way that we, that love is a verb, a practice, something we are learning, we touch into our heart's intention to cultivate this, not just with ourselves, but of course with others. So you can invite in some being in your life that you, is neither uh, a dear one, like already a friendly person or a beloved in your life, when, when they're also not um, a lot of difficulty or conflict. What's what we would call a neutral person. Someone you may meet fairly regularly and you're moving about through your life, um, perhaps in a shop or um, some other capacity. And, but not just like on, on TV, but somebody that you interact with that you maybe don't even know their name. Maybe you can't even really picture them very clearly. And if, if love is the opposite of indifference, then now we want to cultivate uh, this care and attention with this person that's standing in for all those who are neutral. And so this may show up for you as phrases or wishes, heart intentions. May you be happy. May you be safe. May you be peaceful. Or it could just be a felt experience of heart intention in relationship with them. Or just a feeling of being in their presence again at some future point and feeling within yourself, I see you. I hear you. They also wish to be loved. Let's practice with that together for a few more minutes. And then if you choose, you can just kind of let that slide into uh, someone else that there's a slight discomfort. There's a, mm, a slight unpleasantness in the relationship or unresolve. And continue practicing in this way with this being in awareness.
May you be happy. May you be safe. May you be peaceful. May you be loved. And imagine in these last few minutes of practice that we hadn't been taught any hatred. That just imagining a glimpse of love that is boundless and doesn't discriminate against anyone, the way the sun shines on all beings without saying some for you, but not for you. So that all beings everywhere could be seen, regarded, cared for, Again, this could be a felt experience or if it's helpful to you using words or phrases heart wishes that we're cultivating as a verb, as a practice. May all beings everywhere, all beings everywhere, born and unborn, near and far, seen and unseen, may all beings everywhere be safe, May all beings everywhere be cared for. May all beings everywhere experience the opposite of indifference, love. Thank you for your practice and 
I hope that you feel seen and that you can experience the the love that begins with the love we give. Um, I will be away for the next two weeks, but I hope to have a guest teacher um, here for those times. I'll email you to let you know either way. Um, yeah. And, oh yes, also, um, also um, <laughs> Um, I was stumbling over my words earlier and Nelson Mandela was the first president. I was like, South Africa have president or prime minister since president? And um, yeah, and um, I did really think that Eli Weissel was a therapist as well, but um, writer, professor, political activist, Nobel laureate and Holocaust survivor, authored 57 books. 57 books um, yeah so if, um, I apologize if I'm missing aspects of his work I, do, I still think he was a therapist but I might have that wrong um, alright dear ones thank you for joining us on the YouTube recording and for folks here on Zoom um, you're welcome to hang out after for a bit if you like <laughs>